Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. We are ready for the event. JSC PAO, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Courtney Beasley with JSC PAO. How do you hear me? Hey, Courtney, good morning and welcome back to the station. I hear you loud and clear. How me? Great, I have you loud and clear. It's great to see you, Frank. And good morning from NASA's Johnson Space Center. Welcome to our final press conference on orbit with NASA astronaut Frank Rubio. As I'm sure most of you know, on September 11th, Frank surpassed Mark Van Dyke's previous record for the longest single space flight by a U.S. astronaut of 355 days. And on Thursday, he will reach one full year in orbit, on to a 371-day mission where he returns to Earth on September 27th. We'll be taking questions from our phone bridge today and through social media using hashtag AskNASA. But before we get started, Frank, would you like to say a few words? Hey, Courtney. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, so I think uh, Thursday marks a unique milestone for uh, American human spaceflight. And so I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge and uh, thank uh, all the people who have uh, helped me to achieve this, uh, this goal. So first and foremost, uh, my wife and our four kids. Uh, whose resilience and strength have kind of carried me through this entire mission. Uh, also to our friends and family uh, who have supported us and prayed for us throughout this entire year. Uh, their, their love has been amazing. Uh, and then uh, after that, um, my crewmates, uh, all 28 crewmates that I've been able to fly with, and uh, especially those of uh, Crew 5 and Crew 6, who I spent the most amount of time with, and of course my uh, Soyuz crewmates who have been through this entire event with me. Um, it's been an incredible experience. And uh, really, the time with them has been the most special part. Uh, and last but not least, uh, to thank the entire uh, flight control team, the flight directors, the flight controllers, uh, especially at NASA, but also uh, for our international partners. Uh, it's been just uh, incredible to work with all of them. Uh, they make this place run so smoothly, and it really uh, makes it easy for us uh, to be up here and work uh, here. And so I'm incredibly uh, thankful for the entire team and to have been able to spend this time together. Thanks, Frank. We will go ahead and open it up for questions. If you are on the phone bridge, just a reminder to press star 1 when you're ready to ask your question and star 2 if your question has already been asked. And for media asking your questions in Spanish today, please repeat the question in English before Frank delivers his response. We'll go ahead and start on the phone bridge with Gina Sinceri with ABC News. Been up there for a few days. What hacks have you shared with her about life on the space station, given your vast experience now? Hey, Gina, good to talk to you again. I think I missed uh, the first portion of your question there. Could you please repeat that? Certainly. Uh, Laurel O'Hare has been up there for a few days now. What hacks have you shared with her, given your vast experience on the space station, your tips and tricks? Yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, it's great to have Laurel up here. She's a close friend. Uh, she's a classmate. And so uh, Jasmine, Laurel, and I have had a great time kind of reuniting here in space. And honestly, uh, she's doing fantastic just on her own. Uh, we've been showing her around as a, as a crew and just kind of, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day life is kind of what you show them the first couple of days, how to use the restroom in space, how to prepare your food, uh, how to sleep, all the little things you kind of take for granted on Earth, uh, you kind of have to learn anew up here. And although we have fantastic training and we come up incredibly uh, well prepared, uh, you always just need a little bit of uh, kind of showing you around how the, the, how the real thing works. Uh, so we kind of focused on that. And then uh, yesterday and today were her first couple of days of real work. And honestly, uh, she looks like a pro already. So uh, we've been working together on a few tasks. And uh, you know, more than anything, just kind of showing her little odds and ends that you learn uh, over the span of a year. But I have uh, full confidence she's going to do great over, over the uh, next six months. Next, we have a question from Bill Harwood with CBS News. Hey, thanks, Frank. It's Bill Harwood down at the Kennedy Space Center. Um, you know, one of the questions I had thinking about a year-long flight, and, of course, Soleg and Nikolai are going to pretty much do the same thing on their increments. Uh, when you look ahead to something like a flight to Mars and a mission that will take, you know, seven or eight months just to get there and then come back, what does your experience tell you about that? What is the psychological aspect of all of that? Uh, more 
than the physical aspect of it, or is it the other way around? How do you how do you view that for these future long duration flights? Thanks. Hey, Bill. Uh, yeah, you know it is. It, that's a great question because uh, hopefully we'll be dealing with that topic here in the next couple of decades, and so it's uh, key to start preparing now. Uh, and I think it's really a combination of both. Uh, the psychological factor. Uh, was more of a factor than I expected. But again, uh, just having a really good team around you is uh, such an incredible help. Um, staying busy, but not too busy, and just finding that uh, work uh, balance uh, along with uh, you know, relaxation as, as, uh, as able. Uh, and then staying in communication with loved ones uh, back on Earth, I think, is going to be important. Uh, but just really uh, having a good team and having trained together as a team um, and focusing on the mission together as a team I think is going to be incredibly important, but I, I'm confident that whoever uh, is uh, going on that mission is going to do great, and I look forward to seeing how that team operates. Next up is Kristen Fisher with CNN. Hi, Frank. Kristen Fisher with CNN. I'm wondering if you had known at the time you launched that you were going to be up in space for a full year instead of six months. Would you have still done it? And uh, would you have done anything differently to prepare? Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, hey, Kristen. It's uh, good to talk to you again. Uh, this is great. I feel like I've uh, spoken to many of you before. So, uh, you know, it's, um, that's a good question. I think it would have depended on when I would have found out. Um, obviously, if, um, if they had asked me up front before you start training, because you do train for um, a year or two years for your mission, um, I probably would have declined. You know, it would have hurt, but I would have declined. And that's only because of family uh, things that were going on this past year. And had I known that I would have had to miss those uh, very important events, I, I just would have had to say uh, thank you, but no thank you. Uh, but once you commit to the mission, once you're part of the training, um, and, you know, really all the assets and all the preparation that go into you, and, and the, the mission kind of counts on you. Uh, so I think if I had found out uh, before launch, but essentially, uh, well into the training cycle, I, I would have been committed to the mission because ultimately that's our job, and uh, we have to get the mission done. And uh, you know, having the uh, International Space Station going for 23 years requires a lot of individual and family sacrifices, uh, but sometimes that's what you have to do. Next, we have Carlos from Telemundo. Yes, Frank, it's Carlos Robles from Telemundo Network. How are you doing? Um, my question is, uh, first of all, I will do it in English. What is the most powerful experience you had in space, and how has it changed your perspective on life on Earth? ¿Cuál es la experiencia más impactante o reveladora que has tenido en el espacio, y cómo ha cambiado tu perspectiva aquí en la Tierra? Buenos días, Carlos. Eh, gusto saludarte. Eh, bueno, sabes, la, la experiencia creo que más poderosa que he tenido es... Uh, es ver nuestro planeta, la belleza que es en nuestro planeta. Uh, y claro, yo creo que ya much, muchos no, no tienen necesariamente que uno venir al espacio para entender que tenemos que cu cuidar nuestro planeta. Eh, pero creo que uh, viendo cómo es de bello, cómo es de pequeño alrededor del universo que está uh, al lado de nosotros y de veras que no hay nada más. Entonces creo que pone el énfasis que... que, que Importante es cuidar nuestro planeta para nuestros hijos y para el futuro. Next, we have Marcia Dunn with the Associated Press. Yes, hey, Frank. Um, when Scott Kelly got back after his almost year in space, he, he walked into his house and went right into the pool, his swimming pool. So I'd like to know what, what are you looking forward to like that uh, when you get back on Earth? What, what can't you wait to see and feel and do like that? And in a quick aside, what was the hardest point in your mission? What, what point did you just feel like you maybe couldn't take it anymore and then got over it? Thanks. Yeah, no problem. And uh, thank you so much for uh, a great question, because I think it, it adds the human factor to this past year. So uh, for me, honestly, obviously, uh, I think uh, hugging my wife and kids is going to be paramount. Uh, and I'll probably focus on that for the first couple of days. Uh, but then getting home, and, and we're uh, blessed enough to have kind of a quiet backyard, and I think just going out uh, in the yard and enjoying the trees and the, and the silence. Um, you know, up here we kind of have the, the constant hum of uh, machinery that's keeping us alive, 
it's very important, but it is just a constant hum uh, that you probably hear in the background. And so I'm looking forward to just being outside and uh, enjoying the peace and quiet. Um, you know, the hardest point, I, gosh, um, it's hard to say. I think when it finally became uh, real that it was gonna that it was gonna um, require me to stay for a full year was difficult. Although that decision uh, really took a couple of months, and so essentially we knew the situation. Uh, we were dealing with it. We were coming up with options, and um, and so although it was difficult, honestly, I had already kind of come to terms with it. My family and I had come to terms with it, uh, and so it was a little bit. It made it a little bit easier by the fact that um, it did, you know, give us some time to kind of cope with the possibilities. And so when it came, I think we were prepared to to just commit to the fact that we had to do this and we were going to try to do it well. Next, we have Mark Corot with Aviation Week and Space Technology. Thank you very much. Uh, once you're back on Earth, um, can you explain to us sort of how your um, uh, reacclimation will be uh, traced, how long that might be, and the kinds of things that uh, will be monitored from a health standpoint? and also the, the sort of data that you think will be valuable, again, to going back with what you mentioned when you started preparing uh, your fellow astronauts for long missions to the moon and Mars. Yeah, Marco, um, thanks. Cause I think a lot of people are, are curious about that. Um, you know, so it's, it's interesting. We put our vestibular system uh, through quite a challenge. When we first get up here, obviously you go from a gravitational field to um, zero G load. And so uh, a lot of people spend the first few days sick. I was fortunate in that I spent uh, a, a couple of hours kind of not feeling great, but uh, quickly adapted. And by the next morning, I was feeling pretty normal. Um, but uh, essentially, you adapt to the fact that uh, the, the fluid in your semicircular canals essentially uh, becomes acclimated to being in zero gravity. And so uh, when you go back to Earth, the opposite happens in that uh, constant uh, force of gravity. Uh, really affects a lot of us pretty strongly, and, and you may end up uh, spending a lot of time being sick. And so your vestibular system is probably the most, uh, the most affected, and I think uh, for most of us, the first few hours, you're going to uh, make close friends with some medicine and, and some bags and just try to lay down and, uh, um, you know, keep a low profile. Uh, and then after that, really, it's a couple of months to regain your strength. Uh, we do a great job. Our trainers do a great job of keeping us in shape up here. Uh, but the reality is we're not standing, we're not walking, uh, we're not bearing our own weight. And so it just takes some time to get your bones and your muscles uh, used to doing that consistently back on Earth. And so it'll be a f anywhere from two to six months before I essentially say that I feel normal. Uh, we'll try to expedite that as much as possible. Uh, but um, we'll see. You really never know. And this being my first mission, I just don't know how my body's going to react. Next, we have Betiana from CNN Espanol. Hi, thank you for your time. I will do the question in Spanish first. And uh, Frank, eh, después de estar tanto tiempo en el espacio, ¿qué mensaje te gustaría darle a todos en la Tierra, pero sobre todo a los niños pequeños que te admiran y a aquellos que tienen eh, un, un, una ascendencia latina como la tuya? Eh, so, um, after spending so much time in space, what message would you like to give everyone on Earth, but especially real children who admire you? Buenos días, Betián. Uh, mucho gusto. Eh, bueno, claro, es, es, un gran, es un gran honor uh, representar nuestra comunidad uh, latina eh, y lo, a los hispanos. Y uh, de veras que el mensaje para la juventud es eh, que adelante con el trabajo, el estudio, uh, cualquier cosa, cosa se puede. Uh, y de veras que es importante que nuestra comunidad, comunidad eh, siga adelante y siga mejorando nuestro país. Uh, y yo creo que va a ser, uh, los latinos van a ser una gran parte de América en el futuro. Y para mí es un gran orgullo estar aquí uh, representando eh, nuestra comunidad. Next, we have Robert Perlman from Collect Space. Hi, Frank. Rob Perlman from Collect Space. Um, I know there's a tradition to award astronauts a 100 days patch when they reach that milestone, like I assume you did or received earlier during this mission. Now that you're days away from reaching 365 days, do you think there should be a one-year patch? Or how do you plan to mark the occasion with your crewmates? How do you plan to mark the occasion with 
Hey, Rob. Uh, you know, I'm probably the wrong person to ask for that. Uh, I was uh, infamous in the, uh, in the military for not wearing many of my patches most of the time. Um, you know, I, I'll probably just wear my normal uh, flight suit. Um, I, of course, I'm, I'm again honored to the, uh, reach this milestone, um, but it's a team effort. And so uh, if, we, if we do make a patch, then they, get, they better make a whole lot of them because we'll have to give them out to all the team members who made this possible. But um, yeah, certainly, you know, I hope we, um, we can take a moment to, to really um, just enjoy it, right, as a NASA team. Uh, and the fact that we, we can keep the International Space Station going for 23 continuous years, that we can have people up here regularly now for uh, up to a year. And the reality is, yes, I'll cross that mark, um, but, it, you know, my mission is really no different from Mark's, uh, Christina, uh, or Scott, uh, you know, and, and lots of other people. You know, Drew was up here for nine months. Uh, and so a lot of people have seen the endurance and the sacrifice that it takes to go this long. And so I'm just lucky to have gone a couple of extra weeks. But, um, yeah, no, I think it's, uh, it's really something that as a team we're going to take a lot of pride in. Next we have Elizabeth Howell with Space.com. Frank, thanks for spending time with us. You've spoken before about the significance of celebrating a year in space during National Hispanic American Heritage Month. Can you talk a little bit about the mentors in that community that helped you either during your career or during your flight as relevant? Thank you. And Elizabeth, I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I heard you right. Did you say uh, to talk about mentors? Is that correct? Exactly. Mentors, or if you want to talk about more generally community members. Thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, for me, mentors have been incredibly uh, impactful throughout my life, uh, especially in the military where you're changing jobs every uh, three years. You have the opportunity to work with uh, a tremendous breadth of great individuals out there. And I've seen the same at NASA. Uh, and I think every community, really, not just the uh, Latino community, um, but as a nation, I think we need to stand up more and more uh, and more men and women need to stand up and be role models for the younger generations. Uh, ultimately, the reality is none of us are perfect. Uh, I'm especially not perfect. Uh, and so I, I think the, the importance of role modeling is to show, hey, effort, attitude, uh, and when you mess up, kind of admitting it, admitting your mistakes, and uh, showing that resilience to, to do so and then get better after that. Uh, so again, I've been incredibly blessed. I hope that uh, my actions, more than anything, uh, serve as role models for, for uh, other kids. But the reality is there's uh, I look at just my crew here, and there's just incredible people. Uh, and if you just look around, I think there's uh, somebody out there that you can say, hey, I kind of want to be like that person, but then go out there and make your own story and uh, forge your own path and make your own contribution to our community. Next, we have Abeba from CBS News Miami. Hi, Frank. This is Abba from CBS News Miami. You've just broken the record for the longest space mission in U.S. history. Um, what was your first mission and how did it feel? Hey, Aveda. Uh, well, uh, again, this, this actually is my first mission, which is uh, incredible at the fact that it just uh, happened to, to last this long. Um, you know, and it's, again, it's been a mixed emotional uh, roller coaster to a certain degree. Uh, because it, personally it was an incredible challenge and it was difficult. Um, professionally it was incredibly rewarding. Uh, it's a huge honor and uh, you know it's a privilege to represent our office and our team this way. Um, but overall I think um, one thing that I've tried to do and hopefully have achieved, I, I certainly haven't done it perfectly, is just to kind of uh, stay positive and stay steady throughout the mission uh, despite the internal up and downs. Uh, you know, you try to just focus on the job and on the mission and uh, remain steady because ultimately every day you have to show up and do the work. And up here uh, in this very unforgiving environment, um, we have to do things right. Again, we have an incredible ground team that backs us up. Uh, but as much as possible, you try to bring your A game because uh, that's what the mission requires. Next, we have Maria from Caracol TV. Hi, Frank. I'm Maria Arango from Caracol Televisión in Colombia. I'm asking you in English, but if you please uh, answer us in Spanish. We met your mother in El Salvador last week. She was so proud. I'm sure you will be back safe. And after a whole year of hard work in space, uh, she's sure you're going to bring important uh, things for science and for humanity. What is exactly that that, that you're bringing back? 
And she told us also that you love to eat a big, a big green, fresh salad when you land uh, in Earth. Eh, estuvimos con tu mamá la semana pasada. Eh, está orgullosa y segura de que vas a venir eh, seguro a la Tierra, segura de que vas a traer algo importante para la ciencia y para la humanidad. ¿Qué es exactamente eso que vas a traer? Y si el antojo mayor al llegar para comer es una gran ensalada verde, que es lo que más has extrañado. Gracias, Frank. Bueno, sí, mucho gusto, María, y saludos a, a los colombianos. Muchas gracias por su apoyo. Eh, sabe, de veras que para mí ha sido un gran orgullo representar a, a mi mamá, a, la, a su patria, El Salvador, eh, en nuestra comunidad. Y um, sí, claro, eh, me, me eh, emociona regresar y poder verla. Uh, y lástimamente va a ser unos cuantos meses, creo, porque tengo que recuperar un poco antes de que uh, pueda viajar. Eh, pero sí, eh, una ensalada porque de veras que acá no tenemos uh, demasiada comida uh, fresca. Eh, la comida es excelente, pero no, no muy fresca y eso es porque, claro, tiene que volar meses en adelante en cualquier cohete que viene para, uh, para traer um, supplies a, a la estación. Eh, y a, a veces lo que voy a, a, a traer a, a la tierra, creo que más que todo va a ser la experiencia, uh, el mensaje y las ideas que he podido exper experimentar aquí en la estación. Uh, y para mí va a ser un gran orgullo poder Uh, por poder dar esas ideas a la juventud, no solo de, de América, de El Salvador, pero de toda la comunidad de Latinoamérica. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Frank's, Frank, thanks again for your time today. And as you approach these final historic milestones in your mission, we are all cheering you on back here on Earth and look so forward to having you home. And thanks to all of you who participated through our phone bridge and social media platforms to join in on our discussion today. We'll see you again next time. All right, Courtney, thanks again. And I look forward to seeing you all in a, uh, just about a week. Take care. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.